Welcome again guys, uh, this is the basics of biology tutorials and this is the unit, uh, I think unit 7 and we are discussing about the evolution, ecology and about different evolution as uh, eco ecology aspects like populations and community and all these things. Now in this particular video we will be talking about the populations and growth of an ecosystem. Now population means it's a mixture of uh, different organisms, it's a mixture of uh, species from uh, a mixture of different species actually. Now here uh, the population dispersion could be studied in three different ways. One is called the uniform dispersion. In the uniform dispersion, let me take the color first. In the uniform dispersion as we are seeing in this picture, see if this is, these are the members of the population and this is the area, this, this square uh, is the area. So the distribution is uniform in all the manners so it is called the uniform dispersion and the second one is the random dispersion so the random dispersion as the name suggests the dispersion is happening uh, randomly that means no uh, order is found in this case of dispersion so just scattering random scattering of these individuals in this uh, area and third one is a clumped dispersion now as as the name suggests clumped dispersion means this type of dispersion is a, again dispersion that means a scattered scattery arrangement of individuals but uh, the regions where they are scatteredly ar arranged, they are uh, among themselves, so they gather themselves into particular plots. So we call them the clumps because the clumping of these organisms are found in different regions of uh, of their habitat. Okay. Now let us talk about another very important concept about the population ecology. This is the survivorship curve. Now this survivorship curve will help us to understand the type of organisms we are dealing with. There are actually three different type of organisms, type 1, type 2 and type 3 accordingly uh, depending upon their survivability and depending upon their uh, lifespan and other characteristics uh, which help them uh, for living uh, so long okay, or sometimes so less. Now here the survivorship curve is made uh, in age in the x axis and number of survivors in the y axis. So it can tell us that uh, the number of individuals that can be present at a time accordingly uh, to their age. So uh, in the type 1 what we can see the number of survivors are higher in the very beginning then as the age is going on after some age uh, the individuals start to die and the population curve is getting down. Okay, so uh, in the very beginning they are having few offsprings and they also have low infant mortality that's why uh, the number of survivors are higher at the lower age because they are having low infant mortality. Why? Because they get the parental care of the young and also most uh, survive until the old age, until the age like this for example. From this uh, age particular the, the breaking, uh, breaking of this total survivorship curve is going on. Sorry. Now, uh, the examples are the large mammals including humans, so it could be uh, elephant, it could be tigers, lions and all this because in those cases they are having the few offspring and low infant mortality because they get the parental care, then they mostly survive uh, till the old age. Now the type 2 one is the straight line as you can see here, it, it indicates some different facts and the facts are the equal chance of living or dying throughout the lifetime. So no uh, no such things like the, uh, the survivability, the low uh, infant ages and uh, the death at the old ages because they are having the equal distribution of living and dying throughout the lifetime. The examples are birds, reptiles and small mammals but most, mostly birds and reptiles. The type 3 survivorship curve suggests us the totally opposite thing that of the type 1 because in this case they are having a hard, higher and larger amount of offspring and uh, accordingly uh, this offspring will start to die at the very lower age so the infant death is occurring uh, at a very higher amount as the age is going on they are having the stability they are achieving the stability so the aged uh, survivors will get the stability but the lower age infants will, will die very faster. So high infant mortality rate, many offsprings, no parental care that's why they can uh, they are dying at the low uh, at, the, at the infant infant quality or the uh, infant uh, age. Examples are the invertebrates, fish, amphibians and plants. For example the amphibians like uh, frogs and we are having the invertebrates different types and also fishes and plants are also among the part. Okay, now the changes in population size. Now, if we look at the change in the population size, are the growth factors and shrinking factors. Now, th these two different types of factors are important to control or regulate the population size. 
the growth factors would be the immigration that means the individuals moving into a particular population so for example if we get the population like this now organisms can come from different outsource out place so they can come and as a result of the new organisms uh, coming into the place the uh, the, the number of uh, individual is going on so the population size increases and another important thing natural thing which increase the population size is births because birth gives uh, the higher amount or higher number of organisms so the population increases but the shrinking factors on the other hand is the immigration means the individuals moving out of the population so individuals will move out of the population this is one reason and second thing is also deaths because death will eventually naturally uh, decrease the population size now if we look at the different growth pattern in this uh, growth of organisms we are having two different patterns one is the exponential growth patterns another one is the uh, logistic growth now the exponential growth as you can see in this picture the number of individuals in the y and the time in the x so the number of individuals that are present in a particular time uh, will be uh, will take into account uh, by this, uh, this growth curves now the early phase of the growth as you can see is uh, the early phases of the growth of, of any particular population so actually in, in a particular population there there um, we cannot tag it as an exponential growth or a logistic growth because in any kind of population the mixture of exponential and logistic growth is uh, is observed because in the very beginning phase of their growth of any population we will we'll, uh, encounter with this exponential growth because in those cases why it is exponential because there was a high availability of resources and also little competition uh, uh, available because there are less amount of organisms at this point so little competition high availability of resources so no fighting for the resources no predation or parasitism noticed as a result the growth will go on very very faster rate and if you look at the growth rate it will denote with r so the rate of the growth is very very higher at this particular point now the logistic growth is that when after some time so when the when much amount of time is going on and after that time uh, when when a population particularly reaches uh, its carrying capacity which is denoted with caps k now this carrying capacity means uh, this uh, this this uh, this population actually reaches the capacity or reaches the size uh, beyond which they cannot live on beyond which they cannot stay uh, for most of the time so in this particular stage the population need to be seized the population size needs need to be seized and as a result of that the population growth is halted and it reaches the uh, saturation phase uh, into the particular environment because of limits on the growth because of the limits in for the resources because there are a lot of organisms uh, will come as a result of the exponential growth after the uh, organisms will come the competition will start to arise and as a result of this different competition uh, for the resources uh, predation occurs and also parasitism and uh, illness uh, take place because there are a lot of individuals so the illness will take place and also parasitism and uh, predation takes place as a result of that the growth will limit into a particular region and the carrying capacity is the is the trademark it is the scale which help to measure the way when inside the population when inside the ecosystem the population start to uh, start to uh, starts to be stabilized right so in any kind of growth condition in the first very very first page we will we'll observe an exponential growth now after some time when it hits the carrying capacity of barriers it will be ripped off and it will be stabilized and the stabilization is uh, marked with this carrying capacity inside the ecosystem okay so this is how the growth is going on and if you look at the human population growth at the very beginning this is in this curve actually it is showing uh, the logist uh, it is showing the exponential growth because from uh, 2000 uh, towards this to, from from here on we can find uh, 2080 uh, from here is the bc so 2000 bc to the particular region after the ad we are having a higher or exponential growth but now it's time for the logistic growth because human population is getting higher and higher and very very high amount and the resources are limited so the fighting for the resources and the fighting for the place food and everything is going on so the predation will go on and we can see the terrorism and all these things are going on all the time so as a result of all these things them, there must be fall in in the population now this fall is expected near in the near near future okay now this is a us population density graph you can see here depending upon the different color 
so it's a simple representation how the population is getting warm you can see the dark blue means uh, the people per square mile this is 250 uh, to 66,995 so 250,000 to 65,000 uh, per mile uh, uh, people per mile population in these places so you can find how much amount of people are living in a particular state and uh, how, how it will be difficult for dealing with this population shift so it's, it's a natural uh, resource and it's also the natural process of swapping off or the reaping off all those populations when it's getting really really higher and huge so we must expect uh, the uh, the stabilizing effect on the human population growth in near future so that uh, is a very very important thing to study eco uh, ecology nowadays to community ecology and population ecology nowadays that we must apply some important rules to control the population size by studying the population uh, statistics and also uh, the ecological factors that are interfering with this population statistics so this is all about uh, the population and i hope this will help you thank you